focus our attention on the electrons in an atom. We already know that the protons and the neutrons are what account for the mass of the atom, and they are located in the nucleus. And the nucleus, compared to the size of the atom, is really, really, really tiny. Um, I remember reading somewhere a long time ago that think of a football field as an atom, and the nucleus is like a gumball right on the 50-yard line. So nucleus is really tiny space-wise compared to the size of the atom, the space of the atom. So what is all that other space? Well, there's a lot of empty space. And in that empty space are the electrons. And what we try to do is say, okay, where are those electrons located? Well, the electrons are lumped together based on their energy level. And the electrons that are closest to the nucleus have the lowest amount of energy. As you go further and further away from the nucleus, then the um, energy levels increase in the electrons and whatever electrons are further away have a higher energy than the ones that are closest. We call the energy levels, the different energy levels in an atom, sometimes we call them shells. So there is first shell, the second shell, the third shell, the fourth shell, and you can go up to an infinite number of shells hypothetically. Which shell is the closest to the nucleus? Shell number one. Which one has the lowest energy electrons? Shell number one. So our periodic table, we have shells, we have shell number one has lower energy than shell number two, which is lower energy than shell number three, which is lower energy than shell number four, which is lower energy than five. You can keep on going up to infinity, hypothetically. Okay, now within each shell, there are things called subshells. Again, locations within a shell where the electrons have similar energy. And the subshells or the sub energy levels, we give them letters. All right, there's subshell S, subshell P, subshell D, subshell F, subshell G, subshell H, and you can keep on going. But honestly, in this class, we're only focusing on three subshells, and those are S, P, D, and F. S has the least energy, then P, then F, uh, sorry, then D, then F. All right, so the subshells are a subshell S, which has less energy than P, which has less energy than D, which has less energy than F. Okay, and then the third category is orbitals, and we're going to get into those in more detail a little later on, but let me introduce the concept to you. We said that subshells are within each cell, so there are subshells in each one of these shells. In each subshell, there are orbitals, okay? And the maximum number of electrons in each orbital, doesn't matter what subshell it's in, it's always going to be two, 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 two. So each orbital we'll talk about as a maximum of two electrons. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that there are orbitals within subshells and there are subshells within shells. What is the whole point of all this? To identify where the electrons are located in an atom and to identify uh, which ones are the highest energy electrons because it's the highest energy electrons, those are the ones that are gonna actually do chemistry. So always the electrons that are furthest away from the, from the nucleus are the ones that are gonna be doing all the bonding that we're gonna talk about in later chapters. They're the ones that will, um, you know, create covalent bonds or ionic bonds to create compounds between elements, you know, bonds to create compounds. Again, we'll get into all of that. All right, so now using this information, let's talk some more details. Okay, in shell number one, you can have a maximum, maximum number of electrons is two electrons. So you only have two electrons in the shell that is closest to the nucleus, okay? In shell number two, you can have a maximum, maximum of eight electrons. No more than eight electrons. You can have less than eight, 
but you can't have any more than eight, okay? In shell number three, remember, as you're going further and further away from the nucleus, the energy level of the electrons increases. So in shell number three, you can have a maximum of 18 electrons. And then in shell number four, anybody know that one? Maximum of 32 electrons. Okay, we could go to shell five, shell six, shell seven, but right now let's stick to these, all right? Now, in the subshells, in the S subshell, I'm going to tilt it here a bit. In the S shell, subshell, you have a maximum of two electrons. So anytime you have an S subshell, you can have one electron, but maximum two. You can't have more than that. Anytime you have a P subshell, you have a maximum of six electrons. Okay, you can have less than six, but you can't have any more than six. When you've got a D subshell, maximum of 10 electrons. Okay, you can have less than 10, no more than 10, though. And then finally, with the F subshell, you have a maximum, maximum of 14 electrons. So remember, we said that the electrons are located in subshells within the shells. So if we just said that shell number one holds a maximum of two electrons, which subshells do you think are located in shell one? Well, the only one that can hold two electrons is S, so you have the S subshell in shell number one, okay? You can't have any others because remember, first shell only holds two electrons. Okay, in shell two, it holds a maximum of eight electrons. So what subshells? Logically, you look over here, you see that S holds two, P holds six. So that means in the second shell, you can have S and you can have P, okay? In the third shell, it holds a maximum of 18. So if you put an S and a P and a D, that's 10 plus eight, that's 18. So yep, third shell, S, P, D. I really need to disconnect this. Okay. And then in the F, sorry, in the fourth shell, it holds a maximum of 32. So if you add these up, 14 plus 10 plus, two plus six, that is a total of 32. So that means in the fourth shell, you can have an S subshell, a P subshell, a D subshell, and an F subshell, all right? Knowing this, we can proceed on to doing something called electron configurations. And electron configurations are basically a shorthand that will tell you where the electrons are located, what shell, what subshell, and how many electrons are located in each subshell, okay? So the way we do that is we first write down, this is something called electron, electron configuration. You write down the shell number, okay? And then you write down the subshell letter, It has to be lowercase. And then up here, as a superscript, you write down the number of electrons. It has to be a superscript. So for example, if you have two electrons in the first shell, you would write down one. Remember what subshell is found in the first shell. The only one is, is S. So you would write one, you'd write the shell number and then you'd write lowercase s because it's found in the s subshell of the first shell, and then you'd write a superscript two, one s two. That is the beginning of electron configurations. In the next video, we'll focus on doing a whole bunch of electron configurations, and I'm gonna teach you how to use the periodic table to help you figure out electron configurations. It's the best cheat sheet in the world, okay? 
I'll see you in the next video.